Okay, so welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we have the following um, double sum identity. And that says that the sum, the infinite sum from m is equal to 1 to infinity, and the, sum, the partial sum starting at n equals 1 to m of a sub n, b sub n, is equal to the infinite, the infinite double sum, n is equal to 1 to infinity, and then the partial, well, the infinite sum, m is equal at n to infinity, of a sub n, b sub n. So I know it may not look like much, especially when you're just dealing with the series involved, but what matters in this case is specifically how the index is written. So um, it, today's video is very self-explanatory. We're just gonna verify the left-hand side is actually equal to the right-hand side. So I have no other comments to add, so let's just jump in. So let's start with the left-hand side of our expression. So I'm just gonna rewrite um, the given left side so m is equal to 1 and the double sum n is equal to 1 to n of a sub n b sub n okay so let's actually expand this out so if i plug um m equals 1 all right so we start off with a sub 1 and then we plug m to here so that means the first index will have to go up to 1 then n is equal to 1 b sub n Okay, then just do the same thing we do with 2, a sub 2, then we have this partial sum that goes from um, n is equal to 1 to 2, b sub n, and then add this again, 3, so a sub 3, then 3, and then n is equal to 1 of b sub n, and then this series just continues on, so far, so forth. Why don't we actually, um, with these summations over here, let's actually expand this out a bit. So we have, um, and how about this? For the sake of um, notational purposes, I'll write our expanded sum series in black while I'll keep the constant terms in purple. So let's see, the first one we have a sub one, and then this is multiplied by b sub one. So it goes, starts from n, and then just so it goes up to one, right? Now next is a sub two, then we have to go up to two terms, so b one plus um, so a sub 2 times b1 plus b2, okay? And then next is a sub 3, okay? And then that goes up to b sub 1 plus b sub 2 plus b sub 3. And then the series continues on and so forth. Okay, so the next step is that what you can see is that everything um, can be factored out um, within the depending on the terms of our um, B series. So what, I, what we see is that um, B1 can be factored out from all the um, A terms. So this means we have B sub one, then you can factor out with A1, then add this with A2, then add this with A3, okay, and then so on and so forth. And then you see the pattern again, if you do for B2, then that could be factored out from A2 all the way up to A3, and then so on and so forth. Oh no, I gotta fix this. This is actually, there's supposed to be, um, the series supposed to continue over here. So this has to be plus dot, then plus uh, B2, then A2 plus A3, and the same thing over here. Um, we can factor out a B3, and then the pattern just continues so on and so forth. So A3, then plus A4, okay, then plus dot, 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 so on and so forth. Okay, now what you can see is that with the, um, with all the infinite sums within inside the expression of the A term, we can actually write that back, um, going back to write it as a summation notation. So what that means, so B1, and I can just multiply this with the infinite sum, we start at, um, so in this case, we have to say like our index M is equal to one, then that goes all the way up to infinity of A sub M. Then we can do the same thing for the next one. So B sub two, the infinite sum, and that starts from the index m is equal to two, then a sub m, do the same thing again, b sub three, then the infinite sum, but our index will start at m is equal three of a sub m, and the series just continues on so far and so forth. Okay, and now you'll notice that um, everything has in terms of um, the factor out with b1, B1 plus BM. Okay, so now next you can see that um, everything associated with the B terms of the summation, we can technically just write this out as a, um, 
infinite sum. So if we start that this is infinity, then n is equal to one, right? And then you'll notice that we can see the association with the first, um, for example, B1 associated with M is equal to one, B2 is um, M is equal to two, then B3, then M is equal to three. So that says that M is equal to three, or M is equal to N. So uh, how about this? Um, yeah, so BN, and then we just multiply with the infinity. We set that M is equal to N of A sub M. And so therefore we could just combine that sum together and say that we have our double sum right over here n is equal to one, then the double sum again. So um, m is equal to n of a sub n, b sub, um, well, I got that backwards, supposed to be m, a sub m, and then b sub n, like so. All right, and there we have it. We have what we want to achieve, the right-hand side, which is over here. And so, um, put it this way, we just draw this in black. And we have um, proven the um, right, right side expression like we want to. So yeah, that's, um, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.